uh, this morning since about 2 a.m. Uh, and we've noticed in your location, which is Sacramento, how windy it's gotten. And uh, you know what? It looks like it's not quite as bad as it was earlier. Yeah, but you know what, Walt, uh, you, you can never turn your back on the wind uh, on a day like today because, uh, as you mentioned, just in my backyard, look, it's not all about what's happening in my backyard, but this is just an example of visually what we saw this morning and what I experienced. That plywood right there, that got knocked over. You know, it's a w wide area, so it's, it's easier to catch the wind, but it's not a light object, and it got blown down. And then this just happened maybe about 10 minutes ago. That's my pool cover there, and the thing that winds it up, that got blown into the pool because of the wind. So we're definitely experiencing it in the valley. Now, getting wind in the valley in the morning is not that uncommon. As we, as we know, you get something called the delta breeze, which is a thing that happens in the summer. It gets hot, and then uh, as the, the evening cools down, that ocean wind tends to rush in. So the wind that I should be experiencing, if it's windy this time of year, should be a cool delta breeze, but it's not. It's dry. Uh, it's very warm out here, into the 80s. And uh, I, I want to talk about Bill's point earlier because he was uh, frustrated and confused about why, if it's not windy in Nevada City, why would the power be shut off? And if I could spend just a few minutes talking about that, because this is the number one thing that we hear about, that we talk about, that we try and explain during these power safety uh, shutoffs. The way that energy works, you may not think about it because you know you turn on the lights and 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 the light bulb goes on and then that's it and that's all you really need to know about how power works uh, at your house. But you know we've made this collective decision in many uh, of these cities and communities that power is made somewhere else. Uh, power is made in some cases out of state uh, because there might be different environmental regulations, uh, especially when it comes to coal, natural gas, and some of those other things. And then it's transmitted to places like. Like California. California, in addition to out-of-state power, also has hydropower, which is created by dams, natural gas plants, uh, geothermal power, which is uh, very uh, big in the Lake County area, and wind power and solar. But remember, it's almost always not in your neighborhood, in your town. It's almost always somewhere else. So as the power is generated via a whole bunch of different methods, uh, then it needs to be moved through power lines to get closer to your neighborhood. In some cases, it starts to wane and then has to be repeated. It has to be juiced up to keep it moving. And then it eventually gets to your power pole in your backyard. And this is called a distribution line. And most people think about, well, hey, if it's, windy, if it's not windy here, then I don't need to worry about these breaking and causing a fire. Now, in some cases, the winds will be strong enough that that may be a problem and a transformer will blow off a power pole or something like that. But mostly what PG&E and other power companies in California, by the way, it's not just PG&E, Southern California Edison and also San Diego Gas and Electric, they also have the same similar scenario where they're, in many cases, bringing in power from out of state in order to meet their demand. Uh, and as it moves through very rugged terrain like mountains, canyons, passes, ridge tops, which if you know the terrain of California, we're loaded up with all sorts of extreme terrain changes. That's where those power lines happen to be, those, those big tall towers and the transmission lines. So as power is flowing through there, if the wind is extreme and the fire conditions is extreme in those areas, not your house, but in those areas, that's the concern. So that's where they've been shutting down the power on the big lines coming in. And then if you don't have power coming in off those lines, then there's no power that's available to come in off the distribution lines, the power poles or the, the other substations to come to your house. So it's a, you know, it's a, 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 a out, of, out of sight, out of mind situation, but that's in general how a lot of this stuff works. So if it's not windy in Nevada City, it is very likely it's very windy somewhere else where your power comes from and that's what's been interrupted or cut off and that means there's nothing to come to you. Now that's not always the case, but in general that's what we've been seeing because we follow this story big time during all the other power safety shutoffs and it's unfolding again. They're trying to narrow it, they're trying to find different ways to sort of come in between uh, and they're, they're working on it. It's a big problem. They're working on it, but that's where we are at the moment. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the weather situation because this is huge for everybody. Uh, what we're gonna be dealing with 
is very poor air quality. Uh, if you haven't been following, one of the biggest fires we've seen break out lately is something called the Creek Fire. That's near the mountains by Fresno. Uh, it is a very big fire. They've had to do a ton of overnight evacuations. And for South Lake Tahoe, that's the reason why they have purple air, hazardous air. Now, there's a number of other fires that have been swirling around, not quite out, and that's creating hazard or uh, unhealthy air, which is red. And uh, that's going to be for a good chunk of the valley, uh, not only now, but for for the rest of this morning. Now as the winds pick up, it's possible it may disperse, it may move somewhere else, but just remember air quality is a huge part of how your day is going to go. The strong winds are already here, folks. I've been showing you my backyard, which valley spots are typically not a very windy spot, but we're seeing it down low and we're seeing it up high. Red flag warning conditions because not only is the wind blowing, but look how warm it is. It's only 8 o'clock in the morning. It's almost 80 degrees. Now, we will not be as hot as where we were yesterday, so that is good. But the problem is that it will be hot enough, and we're definitely going to be a lot drier than yesterday, and we're looking at strong winds all day long. So again, let's focus on the wind situation. You know, right now it's windier in Marysville than it is in Placerville, where there's likely some power out in that area. So again, it's that frustrating uh, uh, disconnect of where the power comes from and what's actually happening in your neighborhood. But you can see if you go into the Sierra foothills uh, higher up than Placerville, where some of your power is generated via hydro uh, electric uh, power plants at the bottom of some of these dams, uh, that's maybe where they're shutting off the power. It just all depends on the situation and where they are detecting the stronger winds. Remember, there are going to be up to about a thousand new uh, weather stations in many more locations, so they're trying to pinpoint exactly where the wind is and where it isn't. And one of the hot spots, folks, out by Santa Rosa, that coastal range zone, we know has had huge outbreaks of fires, including the Kincaid fire, which was, they believe, caused by a power line that was not shut off, even though many others in the area were. So this is how things will play out today, hour by hour. This is focused on the valley, but that tells part of the story. You can see that we've got strong winds pretty much all day long, highs in the 90s and also very dry air. Not a record-breaking day, but you know what? Some days aren't about how hot it's going to get, it's how windy and dangerous the fire conditions will be. Now this is going to be for the entire area of Northern California. <clears throat> the area in red is where we have a red flag warning. This includes the coastal range uh, for the higher terrain, uh, the North Bay Hills is what they call it, also out toward the uh, Santa Cruz Hills, or Santa, Santa Cruz Mountains area, which has already been ravaged by fires caused by lightning. Uh, and we're gonna be looking at the valley floor dealing with uh, fire conditions as well as the Sierra. Just this morning, so you know, there's been two grass fires, one near Linda that was reported by CHP and one near 505 and 16th. So fires are already happening on the valley floor uh, in grassy areas and you know some of these communities you're right next to a big open field if the grass burns and the wind direction takes it to your neighborhood some of these subdivisions are right next door to big areas of uh, dead vegetation and very dry fuels so that's how it's going to play out through this morning we're going to be looking at wind everywhere but strongest gusts are going to be in the Sierra and then by this afternoon we're going to have an odd situation where the valley floor will see some of the strongest winds and then we're going to be looking at the Sierra kind of calming down a little bit and that will lull you into this false sense that we're over but we're not look what happens when the Sun goes down we're going to have decently strong winds for the valley, but in, in other words, winding down from places like Sacramento, Stockton, Modesto, but it's just ramping up in the Sierra foothills, gusts up to 50 to 60 miles per hour. By the way, I'm sure by now I'm not mentioning something you really want to know about. That's why we have meteorologist Carly Gomez on standby monitoring your Facebook comments, and she will answer as many as she can, as will I, uh, after this is through. We will be following up with you. And then by early tomorrow morning, the wind in general starts to die down in the valley, eventually by noon in the Sierra, and then we're in a better spot. But the, you know, the warm weather will remain for a while. 90s are here to stay for the next seven to 10 days. Uh, but the most critical fire conditions in the near term is right now, definitely overnight, and early tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. And just so we know one other thing about the longevity of the ongoing fires, I just saw an update about the Creek Fire near Shaver Lake uh, in the mountains by Fresno. Their expected date of containment on that one is October 15th. So anything that starts or is already going is gonna, is gonna keep going for a while. So we need to do our part to not create the new Great California Wildfire. We've had way too many this year, two million acres burned. Yeah. It's a record already. Yeah. We don't need any more. Yeah, well, sep September 9th, Rob. That's where we are today, and you mentioned that that fire October 15th is when they expect to contain that. But between September 9th, 
How long are we going to be in this situation of rolling power outages, wind, dry? There's so much dry fuel. Uh, so are we really looking at sort of being in this mindset until we get our first rain or something substantial? Yes. Well, that I don't like saying that. But that's where we are, because what we already know about the fuels is that they're bone dry, they're basically max dried out, and they're not going to get any moisture anytime soon. At least I don't see it in the weather forecast. And climate-wise, we traditionally don't get our big storm that kind of puts an end, on, end to this, or at least tamps it down big time, until sometime in mid to at middle to the end of October. Hopefully we get something earlier than that, but that's traditionally how this plays out. And some of the worst fire conditions of the year happen in September. October and November, yeah. and in recent years, Walt, we've had them all the way until December. One of the biggest fires in state history was the Thomas Fire in uh, Ventura, Santa Barbara County, and that was burning almost up until Christmas Day. Yeah, it's it, it, the new thing is fire season's year-round now, and uh, maybe there's a lot of reasons for that. Okay, 